Hi, I'm Mary Logsdon here at your library. Today at your library, I have some special guests who are going to join me in conversation about some wonderful programming that's occurring here in March. Stick around. Well, as I said, today at your library, I have asked two uh, community members to join me today because of the role that they're playing in bringing some fabulous library programming here to Ames Public Library this spring. I have both Kathy Speck. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Mary. Um, who is, among other things, co-president of Ames Historical Society. Um, and Steve Sullivan. Hi, Steve. Good morning. Um, who is here representing Mary Greeley Medical Center, Medical Center, where he is the director of marketing and community relations. Correct. And um, as well, you do serve on the Ames Public Library Friends Foundation Board. So I do. thank yes. you for that. Um, today, though, we're gathered um, to talk about upcoming programming um, that the library is going to be hosting in partnership with Ames Historical Society. That's right. Um, the Ames Historical Society Lecture Series. So, Kathy, why don't you just start us off by telling uh, our viewers a little bit bit about the series. Uh, the lecture series began in 2006 and so uh, this year 2016 we are on our 11th annual lecture series. Mm -hmm. uh, it began in the winter of 2006 and we thought it would be um, something unique for the community during the winter months. You know uh -huh. things are very busy in the spring and in the fall and all summer are all kinds of outdoor activities and we thought that it, it might be fun to offer something during the winter mm -hmm. as a, an additional attraction or something to do in the winter. And how has it been received over the years? Well, uh, the, the very actually the, the very first lecture was in the auditorium of the uh, the old library, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and um, it was a capacity crowd. We had to turn people away, and mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, it was so popular that we had to. Uh, repeat it a second time okay. to uh, make sure that everyone who wanted to hear it could hear it. Mm -hmm. And our audiences have been strong. Um, we've presented a variety of Ames stories. Ames, mm -hmm. <laughs> Ames is an amazing community. It yeah. has so many interesting people, events, mm -hmm. uh, organizations, so many interesting stories. And uh, the lecture series begins to kind of dig into some of those stories. Yeah, well this year um, I'm really delighted that we're able to bring the lecture series back to the library because now our capacity has increased of course because That's of right. our expansion right. and renovation project. So beginning in March um, we will uh, host the uh, lecture series here at Ames Public Library in the Farwell T. Brown Auditorium. Oh, yes. So welcome back. Yes, it's <laughs> wonderful. And of course, the, the auditorium is named for the founder of the Ames Historical mm -hmm. Society. So it just, it seems like things really came back together. Yeah, well, we're really delighted. And this year, um, the first lecture series is actually about another uh, institution in Ames, which is celebrating a significant um, anniversary, uh, Mary Greeley Medical Center. So Steve, why don't you tell us what is the topic for the March 29th lecture? You bet. Okay. Um, well, yes, as you note, the hospital is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year, our centennial. Mm -hmm. um, and we will be talking about, uh, I will be talking about that at the uh, uh, event on March 29th. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to uh, uh, go through, it's, very, it's, a, it's a challenge because there's no central repository except for the Historical Society mm -hmm. um, for the history of the hospital. Mm -hmm. In one way, that's not too surprising. Um, um, healthcare is a complex topic, no mm -hmm. matter the year you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And um, it's also, uh, you know, a hospital is, is a 24-7 operation. Right. So things are scattered around. But we're gathering. We're pulling things together. Uh, Kathy just handed me some stuff I'd never seen before. <laughs> oh, so I'm, a little, okay. I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> yeah. um, so w uh, th with the presentation, I really have um, two goals with it. One of which is to remind people who Mary and Wallace Greeley were. Mm -hmm. um, Mary Greeley is not just a name on a hospital, she was a person. Mm -hmm. And um, Captain Greeley, they, they were both, um, there's very, there's not a whole lot known about them, mm -hmm. but what we do know is, is 
is great. It's great story stuff. And um, they, uh, they, both, they were married for nearly 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, they were devoted to each other. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to Kathy about this. She was asking me if I'd discover anything I didn't know. Yeah. One thing is that when he left, he was a Civil War um, uh, officer mm -hmm. for the Union. And um, he, when, he, when he left the Army, uh, left the military, he was a major. Mm -hmm. um, but he liked to be called Captain. Oh. So, uh, which is interesting because <laughs> is I think a major outranks a captain. Yeah. So I think I think he was. I look at that and thinking that maybe he was a little bit more humble yeah. than maybe we we realize. And um, anyway, they they were devoted to each other. She he was there when she died. Mm -hmm. um, he there are references to him maybe not seeing the world in the same way as he did after her death. Mm. And I tend to look at in reading about him and them. You know, we talk about, you know, in his mourning, you know, he wanted to build this tribute to her. I think it's really an act of love, mm. this hospital. And I think um, that's really been the foundation from which the hospital is, has grown. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the culture of the place. It's a very compassionate culture. It's a very, it's a culture very much focused on um, caring for the people who walk in that door, whether they're patients or visitors, mm -hmm. and creating the best um, environment, the best experience for them. That comes in people, and that comes in the facility, that comes in the technology. And it, when the hospital um, opened in September of 1916, mm -hmm. um, Captain Greeley um, spoke about how proud he was that he had helped uh, create something that would provide for the welfare of people who needed help now, mm -hmm. but also would provide help for people who needed it long after he was gone. And I think, so we also want to remind people that we have um, kept that vision mm -hmm. and we have maintained that vision. That's wonderful. hundred years later. And, and as, as you say, this is a great story. Um, the actual title of the program is A Most Magnificent Gift. Yes, thank you for reminding yeah. me of that. <laughs> yeah. We took that, you know, we've been looking through a lot of um, archival material. Mm -hmm. And um, in 1915, there is an article in an Ames paper talking about the building project. Mm -hmm. And it's re and they refer to it as a most magnificent gift. Oh, okay. And I saw that and thought, oh, well, that's kind of perfect, isn't yeah. it? Because um, it is a, a magnificent gift, not only to the city of Ames, but also Story County and well beyond. Our market area really is central Iowa. Mm -hmm. um, and it brings people, we serve people Marshall County, Greene County, Hardin, Hamilton, Boone, and, and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they all come to Ames because of this hospital. And 100 years, I know that's just fantastic. There have been a lot of centennial celebrations um, uh, with the different, uh, uh, for different institutions and uh, businesses um, around town. And I know the Historical Society just really does a great job to work with different um, entities to um, highlight the past. Um, and I, I'm just kind of curious, Kathy, how do you come up with your topics? I mean, this, this seems like a natural to start off with the centennial of Mary Greeley Medical Center um, this year. Um, is there a committee at the Historical <laughs> Society? Um, do, do ideas just kind of pop up through the, um, yeah. How do we do it? Informal conversations, how, how do does it do happen? It? How yeah. do we do it? Um, the, the series consists of four talks. Okay. And so um, we'll start in March with uh, Steve's History of the Hospital, and then continue on through June. And they're, they're generally about the last week of the month. Okay. But um, so we're looking for four great topics. And so we're always looking for something that is timely, like the yeah. centennial of the hospital. Right. And then um, we ch always try to include at least one story about Iowa State. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're always looking for an Iowa State topic. And um, sometimes we have people come forward saying, uh, this year we have a guy writing a book about Billy Sunday, who was a very famous um, baseball player turned evangelist. Mm -hmm. And he's writing a book and, and he contacted us two years ago to say he might be interested in doing a lecture. So it's, it's a matter of um, uh, putting together a lot of ideas mm -hmm. and uh, running it past usually the Historical Society board and staff just to say, do you think this will appeal to people? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's, it is interesting how the series comes together because we do find people with expertise in particular subjects. Yeah. And so this year there are four. So you, you've That's changed right. it. It's not just a winter series. We're beginning, actually, it's spring. <laughs> It's March, April, 
March, April, May, and June this year. That's right. And we do have um, a, brochure, a brochure here available at the library. Right. I'm guessing it's a, it's available across the street at the historical yes. at the history center as well. Yes. Um, and so the dates and the topics um, are available for people to um, to take a look at ahead of time and mark their calendars. Right. As you said, they're generally the last week of each month. Um, sometimes on a Tuesday night and sometimes on a Wednesday. Yeah, we kind of alternate them. We we used to have them always on the same night of the week, and mm -hmm. then we realized that hearing back from people, oh, I always have Bridge Club on Tuesdays, I can never come. Oh, so we okay. thought we would kind of alternate the days of the week. So this year uh, they will alternate, start it on a Tuesday and alternate Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And uh, they are at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. downstairs at the library. Right. And um, one thing we're doing this year, I mentioned earlier that uh, the very first lecture that we presented had an overflow crowd. Yes. We had to repeat it twice. Well, we're bringing it back. So oh. 11 years later, uh, Dennis Wendell and Irv Kloss are going to come and talk about the history of the land that is now Ada Hayden Heritage Park. Wonderful. And we're going to talk about the uh, original owners of that land. Uh, mm -hmm. These were people who were farming up north of Ames. Mm -hmm. And then the whole chapter on uh, the quarry operation that resulted in the lake that right. is currently the centerpiece of the park. Oh, great. So um, uh, that will th that will be the second lecture. Mm -hmm. And then the third lecture, oops. Let's see. Let's see. That's the Iowa State College football controversy yes. at Iowa State College. Oh, my gosh. Um, Doug Biggs is a professor of history. He lives in Ames, but amazingly, he teaches in Kearney, Nebraska, mm -hmm. so he is quite the commuter mm -hmm. academic. But um, Doug has been researching topics on, Ames, uh, on Iowa State history, primarily to write some articles for the Visions magazine, which uh -huh. is the Iowa State's alumni magazine. And so we have asked him to enlarge on the topics that he is writing about for the magazine and turn them into a lecture. Oh, great. So Doug has been a very popular speaker for the last two years, and mm -hmm. so we're really pleased to have him back for a third year. Okay. And he's going to talk about an era where um, the Iowa State football team was so successful that, he, that they began getting um, uh, accusations that they were hiring professionals. Oh my. That they were not students. Oh. So he is going to talk about that famous uh, juncture in, in Iowa State football history. Interesting. And then you're going to be wrapping up with the program in June about um, um, Billy the life of Billy Sunday. Billy Sunday. Yeah, so really you're learning about um, the hospital, um, the university, um, city property, city, the development the city park, the, the city park, of the big city park, and then um, Billy Sunday and early Famous Ames individual. uh, individuals. So it's quite a diverse uh, slate of yeah. topics through the yeah. lecture series. Yeah. Um, Steve, are there other activities happening around the centennial that folks in the community should keep their eye on? Yes, there are. And I, I just want to, before I get into that, I just want to say. Um, the state, the 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 city's, uh, the historical society, Story County Historical Society, uh, is invaluable. I mm -hmm. mean, we Ames, history. Ames I'm sorry, <laughs> it's so early. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> the Ames Historical Society has been incredibly valuable to yes. us, and uh, we're developing a timeline oh, um, for that will be um, on our website. And we couldn't do it mm -hmm. with without without the help mm -hmm. um, and the resources of the Historical Society. So um, when I was asked to do this talk, it was like, yeah, that's this is my, kind of my way of saying thank you oh, for thank all the help. It's it's amazing. And um, if they weren't around, I don't know if we'd have the uh, the records and the photos that we um, that we have been able to access. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so yes, um, <laughs> it's a really it's a large undertaking. Again, we're a 24/7 operation, and stopping to celebrate is a challenge mm -hmm. for us. But we're we're going to try. Mm -hmm. The um, uh, in uh, this is a very big year for the hospital. We've had a hundred thirty million dollar capital project going on, I think for almost a hundred years. No, it feels like <laughs> um, it's about three years now, and uh, the final stages um, of it uh, are the completion of a skywalk, mm -hmm. uh, our new main. Uh, entrance lobby area, mm -hmm. patient mm -hmm. registration area, and our emergency department. And if all goes well, those components will be completed um, 
probably by June or so. Uh, we're expecting our emergency department to open, our new emergency department to open in early April, and we will be having an open house, um, uh, hopefully on April 9th. Okay. It's, a, it's a Saturday, so we'll invite people to come to see uh, our new emergency department. Hopefully it's the only time they will need to see it, mm -hmm. but um, we want people to know um, um, what the services are there. It's going to be 70 percent bigger than our current emer emergency department. Mm -hmm. So that's um, a, a one of the things we have coming up this year. We also will be very soon, um, w This the timing of this just uh, was perfect. Through a v series of um, uh, um, amazing and really highly entertaining circumstances, we have been able to um, acquire and restore uh, stained glass windows mm -hmm. that oh, were in wow. the, um, yes. the Greeley Mausoleum. Yes. Oh. They were lost to time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, nobody knew really where they were, but through a again a series of um, highly fortunate circumstances, we, we found them and we had them restored and they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to put them back into the mausoleum because we wanted to preserve them. Mm -hmm. So one of them will go on display mm -hmm. in the in the hospital's um, new main lobby okay. and so people will be able to see it. And we were trying to figure out what to do with the other one. And the Greeley's had a major, major role in the creation of the Ames Public Library. Mm -hmm. uh, the original land was given to them. Mm -hmm. um, Mary Greeley herself was stored, uh, I think, the original collection. Uh, that oh, there were 400 gosh. volumes mm -hmm. um, early on. Um, she was a member of the first library board, very, very active. In fact, when she died, the um, library committee, whatever it was back then, wrote a very touching uh, tribute to her mm -hmm. that was published in the, in the local paper. Mm -hmm. So we're giving the other one to the library oh, to wonderful. display permanently. So it'll be, I think it'll maybe be in the Farwell Brown Room. I'm not 100% sure where they have it planned. Oh. So we're getting them framed right now. That's now in the terrific. meantime, some people will want to probably wonder why we didn't put them back in the mausoleum. Mm -hmm. um, well, we didn't want them to get lost again. Or, mm -hmm. or, or I, we don't know what happened to them, why they were in the state they were in, mm -hmm. but we didn't want to put them back. So what we have done is we've created replicas mm -hmm. um, using a very sturdy form of glass with an applique that's on the back of them. Wow. So the mausoleum, we cleaned it up, we fixed it up a little bit, it's at the Ames Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, the stained glass windows are there in spirit, if um, I may. Yeah. And um, so there's light coming back in there again. Uh, Mary Greeley is interred there. Her husband, of course, Captain Greeley, and uh, Mary Greeley's parents mm -hmm. um, are, are both there. So that's, um, we're looking forward to that. Uh, w w w the story will be told one way or another very soon. It's, it's, it's amazing. This it is involves, intriguing. It is, it involves three different communities, um, a mausoleum and um, uh, a pile of uh, animal dung. Okay. So that's this, all I'll say. I, you know, that, that's that, all that I'll might say. be the topic for another lecture. It I don't know. Be. This is maybe the, how great the ideas come saga. about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our big event, of course, will be um, um, August, Seventh. 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 Thank you. Seventh. <laughs> August seventh. Well, we're going to have a birthday party for the hospital. It'll be at the Iowa State Center courtyard. Mm -hmm. um, the big aspect of it, the the big feature of it, is of course <clears throat> we're going to try and set a new world record, a oh. Guinness World Record okay. for the largest reunion of people born at the same hospital. Oh. We were trying to figure out how do we really celebrate a hospital centennial. Mm -hmm. um, because again, healthcare changes all the time. We didn't want to go too far back in the past because none of that applies anymore. We really wanted to be a celebration of who we are now. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, you know, a hundred years later, here we are. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, uh, we're a city operated, but essentially independent hospital. We're not tax supported. We've weathered um, all the changes and, 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 uh, and shifts in healthcare and we're stronger than ever. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of hospitals uh, in our situation aren't in as good a shape as us mm -hmm. um, for a number of reasons, but um, you know, we, we've grown mm -hmm. and we've kept up with the community and it's, it's a pretty amazing place. So when trying to figure out how we celebrate that without getting too sepia tone, no offense. Um, <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> um, well, we thought, well, what about being born here? Mm. I mean, this is the place where people's lives begin. Mm -hmm. And if they stay in the area, that's the beginning of the, re the relationship with this hospital. Mm -hmm. So we thought, well, let's have a party and invite everybody born here. Okay. So, but then we wanted to expand it. And the party is really for everyone. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you've ever walked in the doors. You can come to the party. It's okay. Um, then we thought, I wonder if there's a world record. 
and there was. Mm -hmm. There is. There's a Guinness Book of World Records uh, record for the largest reunion of people born at the same hospital. Mm -hmm. When we looked, it was under 1,000. It was like 954, and it was in Hong Kong, of all places. Okay. And since then, it has been broken, and it is now, the record is now owned by a hospital in the Philippines, and it's 1,221 people. We're very confident that we can set a new one. We deliver about 1,100 mm -hmm. uh, babies a year mm -hmm. um, at the hospital. And um, so if, if, if everybody who was born last year shows up, <laughs> you know, we're going to be good. <laughs> we're going to be good. But we've, we've invited people to tell us the stories about the day they were born or the day oh. they delivered. Mm -hmm. We've gotten some really some wonderful stories about people's parents driving through blizzards mm. to get here just in time um, with their doctor do following them in, in his car, mm. his head sticking out the window following taillights, and, uh, um, and the doctor winding up with a really bad cold. <laughs> so there's, there, are, there are great stories, and yeah. these are stories families pass down, sure. that you weighed, you know, this many pounds and all of this. And um, so we're collecting these wonderful stories about being born at Mary Greeley. Uh, the key thing for people who want to participate in the party, mm -hmm. in the record setting attempt, mm -hmm. you have to look at your birth certificate. Uh -huh. If you were born at the hospital, please look at your birth certificate. Make sure it says Mary Greeley. Okay. Because you have to present a birth, Guinness, the Guinness people are very picky about mm -hmm. the validation process. So people will have to come to the party, present their birth certificate. Uh -huh. It needs to say Mary Greeley. Not all birth certificates say the hospital the where the you hospital. were born. Right. If it does not, contact me at Mary Greeley. Mm -hmm. we, give, I need a name and your birthday, the name when you were born, your name when you were born, mm -hmm. and your birthday. Okay. We can check other records. And if we can validate it through other records, we will issue a letter of validation. Yes. Our records indicate that you were indeed born in Barry Greeley on this day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and people will bring the letter mm -hmm. and their birth certificate, no matter what it says, with them. And, and we'll be able to participate in the uh, world record attempt. Wow. Now, we know we'll have people coming who weren't born at the hospital, but maybe their, their infant or their toddler were born there. So just bring their birth certificate, make sure it says Mary Greeley. And when we do the big gathering, you will of course be, accompany your children. Mm -hmm. You will be with them, so you will be part of the group. You won't be a part of the official count. Your child will. Okay. So um, w it's gonna be, um, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of family events at the, at, at the party. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it, we're really looking forward to it. And this, again, if you have a great story about the day you were born or the day you delivered at Mary Greeley, mm -hmm. um, uh, please, please let us know because we love to hear them. Uh, we're, making, we're doing videotapes. We're collecting them. We're writing them up. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be put, publishing them in our magazine. Wow. Um, we, we just did a video with a woman whose uh, son was born at the hospital. He was the ninth boy born that day, mm -hmm. and we ran out of circumcision kits. Oh, my. So <laughs> they had to circumcise him the next day. Okay. So these are the stories that, yeah. again, they're little stories, and they're big stories, but they're the stories people mm -hmm. pass down yeah. about the day they were born. It's wonderful. And so just bringing it full circle, I mean, I love the, the idea that you're continuing to gather stories in celebration of the centennial. Um, I think probably those stories will be captured, likely um, housed at the Historical Society. So 50 years hence, when they say, what, right. what did they do for the centennial? Um, folks will be digging yeah. through um, some of the archives at the Historical Society, perhaps, to find out um, in what way we celebrated. Um, and I'm just thrilled that this year, for the start of the lecture series, you'll be mm -hmm. here to um, share more about the Greeleys and their magnificent gift to the Ames community. So thank you so much for coming today um, and sharing a bit about what's going on both at the Ames Historical Society and Mary Greeley Medical Center here at Ames Public Library. Um, again, March 29th, you can hear the full lecture from Steve and learn more about what's happening at the Ames Historical Society. So um, please uh, do join us. Now just wait for a moment and we're going to share some of the new items that have recently been added to the library collection.
I don't know about you, but I'm really looking forward to the Ames Historical Society Lecture Series here in March. That, however, is not the only thing happening in March. Of course, as always, I hope that you will take a look at our page one calendar of events. Um, check out the library's Facebook page. Uh, and of course, just look at our um, updates that are posted on our digital displays here in the library, letting you know what's happening uh, each day. Uh, in March, actually, we will be continuing with our Ames Art Cinema on Wednesday evenings. We open the doors at 6 for coffee and tea and conversation, and at 6.30 we start the film. This month we're featuring award-winning, um, Academy Award-winning foreign language films that are really um, unique and have probably never played in Ames before, so we're hoping that you will come to that. And I'd also like to mention that in March we are beginning a new series of conversations in Spanish. So if you are a um, Spanish-speaking person or somebody who wants to practice speaking Spanish because you're new to the language, um, we invite you to come to the library on Thursday evenings um, to have informal conversations with others interested in practicing speaking in Spanish. Those are just a few things happening. Pick up page one, stop by the reference desk, ask us questions, give us a call. Um, we are really eager to uh, connect with you here at your library. Thanks so much for being with me today. This is Mary Logston at your library.